the apartments that once industriously spent so long saving up for decorating and making comfortable now lie in a heap of rubble after a violent quake hit turkey new and old buildings some constructed only six months ago fell apart others flattened like concrete pancakes the full extent of the damage is unknown from 7.8 magnitude tremor and ceaseless aftershocks which unleashed the catastrophe in Turkey and Syria, killing at least 24,000 people. Turkey's death toll rises every day. In parallel, so has worry over why in a country with multiple fault lines and a history of major tolls, building quality is so poor that buildings fall apart like paper. Experts say Turkey has the regulations in place to prevent such a catastrophe, but they are only applied loosely by construction companies, the largest of which are often close to President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Officials say at least 12,141 buildings were either destroyed or seriously damaged in Turkey. Since the first quake was so huge, damage was to be expected, but not the type of damage that you are seeing now," said Mustafa Eldrick, a professor at Istanbul-based Bogazisi University. Even if a building topples, people can usually hide until searchers can rescue them, he said. But this time, he added, buildings suffered a pancake collapse. The floors are piling on top of each other. Erdik, also the part of Turkey's earthquake foundation, said, which means the chances of being found alive are slim. So why did the buildings topple? The causes are usually linked to the poor quality of the concrete, which sometimes is mixed with too much water and gravel and too little concrete, according to Zini Tekin, a consultant at Istanbul Technical University. Other reasons include steel rods that are too thin to support the columns, which limits the building's strength, the engineer said. But Tekin also blamed engineers and architects, low quality of education, despite private universities appearing across Turkey. Turkey officials have also gambled by easing regulation. Turkey's rules on construction based on California's have been regularly revised since a 1999 tremor in northwestern Turkey. The last revision came in 2018. On paper, standards are respected with contracts entrusted to private companies in charge of checking them, Istanbul architect Ayukit Koksal said. But oversight of this agreement is lax, he added, giving builders greater leeway in following or not of the rules. Heavy bureaucratic procedures also end up diluting who is responsible if or when something goes wrong, Erdik said. The steps and signatories are so many that at the end, it is difficult to identify who is responsible. To fix this issue, he recommends imposing an insurance on all actors against malpractice that guarantees victims compensation by guilty contractors. That's how it is elsewhere in the world and it should be in Turkey, he said. The clear negligence and greed shown by some contractors has sparked fury especially after luxury flats built within the last 20 years 
crumbled like a pack of cards. Many hope this quake will finally lead to better monitoring. The first legal complaint was made on Friday in the southeastern province of Diyarbak, Bakir, and others have followed. Turkey lies on two major fault systems, the North Anatolian Fault and the East Anatolian Fault, making it the country in that area with the highest risk to be affected by a quake. Earthquake researchers predict that an earthquake of magnitude 7 or stronger is very likely to strike Istanbul, which is close to the North Anatolian Fault within the next 70 years. If that happens, we are talking hundreds of thousands potentially because of the population of Istanbul and those buildings are not ready. This is definitely somewhere where the community is worried about because the earthquakes are progressing along the fault and because the buildings in Istanbul are not designed to be seismic resistant. Estimates vary as to potential losses of life if an earthquake is struck Istanbul. The municipality of Istanbul conducted its own study estimating that 40,500 people will die if a magnitude 7.5 earthquake happens at night. One study by a group of European researchers projected 30,000 to 40,000 would be killed. The problems in Istanbul are same problems that have come to light in the most recent earthquake. Many of the buildings in Turkey appear to be extremely vulnerable. Just from initial observation of the damage, for a walker say they destroyed buildings she see in pictures and video seem to lack basic earthquake resistant structure like reinforced concrete or column bracing. Another problem she said is the issue of pancaking where especially the inside of the building collapse, a sign that the internal floors and the structures are not connected strongly enough to the outer wall. If it is in the middle of the night, it's very hard for people to escape because when a building collapses in that way, there's very little gaps, so essentially someone is crushed. Retrofitting those buildings to meet the seismic codes is certainly a possibility. But there are thousands of those buildings, it will be incredibly costly and many of those buildings are generally in poor shape. Paul said, and it just doesn't make sense to spend huge amount of money to retrofit such an awful quality building. Instead, there need to be some incentives to get people to rebuild or move somewhere into safer structures, he said. The number of buildings in that category is huge. Resources in terms of time, people, and money will not be enough to do it in a short time, plus it requires very good planning and incentives that can run for several decades," Ball said. Thanks for watching this video till the end and do subscribe to the channel to get the latest update on construction videos around the world.